Hi, I'm the Iron Tailor. I'm a costumer and steampunk maker. For the past four years, I've been sharing some of my projects through local classes and also through my blog, theirontailor.blogspot.com. There you'll find some detailed instructions and step-by-step -step pictures to walk you through the process of making these projects. I try to use a lot of recycled materials, very simple hand tools, and just basic skills. So these should be able to be done by pretty much anyone. What kind of projects am I making? Well, everything from goggles to metals to more complicated projects, things that light up, or maybe even a complete dive suit. Now, obviously, this project's going to take you a little longer than a single video, but it can be done with those same simple tools and basic skills. To try to spread the word a little bit more, I'm now starting a series of videos. So this is the first in what will hopefully be at least 300 videos, since that's how many projects are back on my blog, on how to make these various projects. Remember, if you ever get confused watching the video, you can always go to the blog, theirontailor.blogspot.com, and get those detailed instructions and detailed pictures. So, take a look at the video, and let's see what you can build. I'm the Iron Tailor, and welcome to my video blog. Today's project is a pair of tall spats, or gaiters, that I'm using to finish off the legs of my dive suit. However, these could be worn separately to dress up a pair of low modern shoes and turn them into something looking a little more historic, and even possibly military-like. To make these gaiters, I can use pretty much any fabric I want, but I'm going to recycle an old pair of khaki-colored jeans. Again, you could use just a regular piece of fabric. These are ones that I was going to throw out, a little beat up, but they're about the right weight and they're about the right color, so that's what I'm going to use. The first step is to cut off the legs of the pants as high up as possible to get the widest section I can. I know I want these to come just above the top of my calf, so I measure that against my leg and I'll cut a little bit extra here to allow for some hems at the top and the bottom. Here's the piece of pant leg that we cut off, just put over the uh, iron toe of the shoe and then you can see it comes up just above the top of my calf. I've cut the pant leg open so I have one wide piece of fabric. And I'm going to hide the second seam inside of the eyelets where we'll be lacing this together just like if it was a tall boot. Here's the folded front of one of my gaiters. So you can see I've laid out the eyelets to show you where they'll be going in the future. And I folded both edges in so that when I lace this, I can tighten it up. But when I unlace it, I can pull it apart far enough to get my foot through the bottom of the gaiter. I've marked the layout for the eyelets using a charcoal pencil and a ruler, and I decided the two inch spacing would look about right. I secured the folds in the fabric with these miniature binder clips. Just a little easier than pins and you don't end up sticking yourself. But to try not to stick yourself, we're going to take this X-Acto knife and I'm going to go through both layers of fabric and make a small hole. That's just to give us enough room to take one of our eyelets and push it through. Not big enough. There 
hair out of the eyelet through the hole, remember you've got a front and a back to these eyelets. So the nice finished piece is in the front. The back is where we're going to flare this out with the tool. And that's not going to look as pretty. That's why we hide it in the back. To set the eyelet, I use my little anvil. We'll flip that over and the tool just goes right in place and then takes a couple of whacks from the hammer. As you can see, it's spread out, but it still isn't as pretty as the front, so that's why we're hiding it inside. Well, through the modern miracle of television, I spent about 20 minutes putting the rest of the grommets in place and then lacing it up with a shoelace. So what you're looking at now is what should be the front center of the tall spatter gator when I'm done. In order to use these clips, I need to turn this inside out, keeping the lacing running along the front of my shin. That way, when I clip these in place, I'll just be able to sew right along them, and I won't have to keep moving them. That's quite a bit of fabric here to bunch up in this down by the ankle. It'll be a lot less when I reach the top. In fact, that's so much, I'm just going to fold it clip it in once and I can always make the adjustment just before I sew it. Easier when I come to the top, not nearly as much fabric. transferred the positions of the clips using some more charcoal pencil to the fabric so I could flatten it out. And here is the basic shape. We're up by the calf, we're coming in by the ankle, and then back out at the foot. So hopefully we'll be able to put through this through the sewing machine and we'll get a fair approximation on the first pass. I'm intentionally sewing a little wide of the marks. I can always come back and put another seam in a little closer to custom fit it. If I do end up a little too tight, I can loosen up the laces in the front and that'll take care of that. So I put a hem on the top and the bottom of the uh, tall spatter, the gaiter, and here I've put it on over the shoe I'm going to wear and laced it all up. And you can see the bottom, it looks a little rough, but that really isn't a problem because this toe cap goes over that and covers that up. The nice thing is it covers all the way back to the heel so you can't really sell, see that I'm wearing nice comfortable tennis shoes. That's real important when you're wandering the convention floor all day. I could make these a little tighter, but I think I'm going to leave them loose right now because the legs of the actual uh, dive suit have a lot of fabric in them, and I think I may need that extra space. So I'm going to leave them like this and take them for a test run at WonderCon. I did a quick test run, and I found that the gator tended to pull up a little bit. So to prevent that, I'm going to do an old trick where I'm just going to take a little piece of elastic and I'm going to sew it to either side of the bottom of the 
uh, gaiter so that this will go under the sole of my shoe and should hold it in place. Now you notice that I've got some tan uh, elastic. This is just the plain white elastic that we can get at any of the fabric stores and I've just dipped it in a cup of really strong tea. Longer you leave it in, darker it gets up to a point. I found that just leaving it in for a few minutes gives me this nice color. You can rinse it out once it's dry. It's fairly permanent and this is actually how khaki was originally found uh, out in the world is the supposedly the British soldiers during the Zulu campaigns had those bright white pit helmets and they felt that they stood out too much so they just used tea to dye them to what we now think of as a traditional khaki color. So a little bit of history. I'm gonna go ahead and sew this on and we'll see how it looks. So there's my little uh, strap underneath the foot. Holds the uh, gator in place a little better. Again with our steel toe cap. And this can actually run up to get the top of it a little better. It's gonna be my finished look. You don't see that much and we've got uh, a lot of support there. I think that's going to hold in place real well during a day-long convention. Today's project is a pair of tall spats or gaiters. In this case I'm using them to finish off the legs of my Mark II dive suit, but they can also be worn separately to turn a fairly plain and low modern shoe into something looking much more military and boot-like for steampunk. 